welcome to the Soul Tribe Podcast. The Soul Tribe Podcast was created to help you navigate through the world of spirituality, wellness, and self-development in an easy, grounded, and relatable way. We break down everything from the Akashic Records, manifesting, spirituality, and so much more. We want to help expand your boundaries and bring the spiritual world to you in a fun and easy way. Get ready to be inspired with tips, tools, and easy-to-digest information. Let's do this. Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to do a bit of an interesting, I think it's an interesting uh, episode, where Lorraine and I want to just discuss past lives and how it impacts our current life or our current incarnation. Um, And before we get into it, I kind of want to give an intro into how this idea came up. I don't know if you remember, Lorena, how this idea for the episode came up, but it was, I was in bed one night and of course I was watching Gaia. (laughs) And for those who don't know what Gaia is, yeah, of course, for those of you who don't know what Gaia is, Gaia, I basically describe it as the Netflix for spirituality, (laughs) right? It's like the binge watching for spirituality, right? So I was watching something. I don't remember what it was, but I was watching something. And at one point I started thinking about how awful it was for those that how many people in this world might be in jail who didn't really commit crimes. And I was thinking about like the system and how it fails a lot of people and how imagine knowing someone that didn't commit a crime and ended up in jail or God forbid, one of your family members or yourself, you know, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and that's it. You know, you somehow weren't able to prove your innocence And I was thinking about it and I actually had my Kashuk records open at the time because I was watching something on Gaia that I wanted to get my feedback from the masters. So I had them open and then my thought process came in with that. And right away they started talking to me like that they understand the feelings that we get when we feel like something's unjust, like somebody's in jail and they didn't commit the crime. And so that's what the masters kind of were pushing through to me. But then they were saying that I had to also remember that a lot of the things that you're going through in this lifetime are usually very tied to past lives. There's a reason why you're going through the experience. And of course, we're going to, in this case, we're jumping over free will. Like, let's say that you, your free will utilized all the right, made all the right decisions, right? To go down that path that was planned for your soul and you still ended up, right? In in, in jail and you were innocent. And so what they're saying is there are many people that are actually in jail, that are actually innocent, but that they're actually doing time for crimes that were committed in a past life. And I thought, oh, so like you're, if you don't finish your, if you don't do your time, you're going to do it another time. And basically what they said to me was that it's actually a decision of the soul. The soul could come back and have remorse for what had happened or what they did. And they could decide, you know what? I want to even the scoreboard. I want to, I want to make things right. I'm going to go to an, I'm going to go back into another incarnation and I'm going to do the time for what the crime that I committed in that other lifetime. Mm. Wow. That's a powerful isn't, message. It, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, it's not, this is not something completely new or something out of the ordinary that we've heard through the Akashic records, right? Like we know how, and we'll get into all the details in this episode, but we know very much so through readings that we do for other people, how past life things will come up in this life and how it's affecting them in specific, you know, in specific areas or things. And sometimes even emotions that we're feeling today can be very much linked to something in a past life or something, you know, this is where the family constellations thing keeps coming up for me too. During readings now, it's, it's a lot about maybe your inherited trauma from your family too that you're carrying on. But in this in this case, we're going to really go into just the specific past lives that we as um, incarnated souls have had and how that impacts what we're living today. So um, yeah. I can actually I love give a this personal topic. example. Yeah. So and, and to me, it's really personal. So for, it's like a big deal for me to share this, but one of the first readings that I had got, um, I was asking about my love life at the time, which is a very normal question, of course. And I was saying like, I was having issues with this one person and I felt like I wasn't 
getting back from that person when I needed. And I was having issues finding a relationship where I felt enough love from the person. Like I felt like I needed more all the time. And what ended up coming up in that reading was that my soul had had a past life at some point that a lot of people were damaged or killed because of decisions that I had made. Not I, Lucia, but this, my soul, right. Incarnated in that other individual. And so this, the soul, my soul decided to come back and live this lifetime of giving love, which is kind of what I do with the Keshe records. I'm, it's a way of loving, right? So I, I came back to give unconditional love or give love back to the world, love that I took away, but that I can't expect love back. I could, it, it could possibly be that I spend almost my entire lifetime giving a lot of love and never obtaining even half of what I give out. And wow. I remember like, I mean, I was hearing this and I was like, this well, sucks. What? Yeah. What do I, I'm not even going to try anymore. Like this, this is, you know, like I, I took it actually really hard when I heard that. Um, it's some, I mean, everything they say to you, they know that you can handle. So of course they knew I could handle it. Yeah. So I was upset when I heard about it for a while and I thought, well, <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I, I don't mean, remember signing that contract. No. <laughs> essentially what they were saying to you is to release the expectation. That's all really. Yes. That's what they were really saying. Yes. And that yes. could be with, with other things too, but essentially what you were feeling was the, the, the part of the lack of specific parts of love life. Right. Um, but I'm sure that would definitely kind of relate into other areas of your life as well where you're not receiving it, like maybe even yeah, I mean, money or um, work or stuff like that, right? I think in my case, uh, it was it was leaked via like love as in a partner. From, and I've, I mean, I've had a lot of partner issues and I can see where that, I can see where I can, I always feel like I never get enough. And so that does make sense for me. And at least I know where it comes from and why it's there. Doesn't mean that it's not there anymore. Doesn't mean that it's still not difficult for me. Doesn't mean like I still don't feel like I need it. It just means that I need to slowly learn to accept it and continue to do what I do, which I do, of course. Yeah, no, right. this is great. But that's that's also such a powerful thing to hear because be it that or whatever that comes up in a, in a reading, it's it's putting it right in your face in a way where it, it's not hurting you, but it's helping you understand your pattern and helping you try to work through that in your own way. So it's not trying to push the other person to love you more or to love you in a certain way, but maybe it's, it's, well, maybe I need to rearrange my expectations that I have on situations and things in my life, because that's what's generating this kind of like dissonance or this kind of um, feeling disconnected from people or that they don't understand me. And maybe it's not, not that they don't understand you. It's that you're not, you're not kind of facing that situation in the way that's most healthy. Yeah. I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> no, I know. And, and, and it doesn't mean that you're, when you hear something, you're going to accept it right away. It might mean, yeah. you know, I need to work through that. And also remember, and I always try to remember this when I do any kind of reading, it's you can change your free will can change and in what you decide can change. So, you know, it's up to you to, to make, any sort of decision on it, on how you want to, yeah. how you want to live that out. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't mean to accept, like, let's say that somebody else is listening and they feel like they have the same situation. That doesn't mean you have to take somebody else's BS. Right. Right. It just means that you can still stand up for yourself and put yourself first. It just means that you might never feel fully fulfilled. In my case, at least you might never, you might never feel fully fulfilled, but now at least you know where it's coming from. Yeah, but then you can get fulfilled with other things. It's me giving love fulfills me, but I just don't need to expect it back necessarily in the same way. It could be in a different way. Yeah, I understand that. I do I do feel fulfilled via what I do, what we do, like the yeah, podcast totally. and, and assisting people. Like I feel amazing the moment I'm reading somebody and I have the cash records open, I'm helping them. And that feels great. But there's still things as a human being that, between the lines you you feel like you need but anyways do you have any of your own like examples or stories of past life stuff that affects my life today that you know impacts? about that they ever told you about I'm trying to think but I don't there's nothing that's coming to mind right now of a past life I mean it, this is really weird yeah actually yeah um 
And I don't remember how this related because obviously all these messages that come through, you kind of just forget them. I was meditating one day and it came to me this past life where I was like a single mom with two kids and that feeling of like literally like dying of hunger and not being able to provide for my family. Um, and that came up in a reading actually, which is really funny without me realizing, I didn't even ask about it. It just came up. I was like, oh, then what I saw in my meditation is correct. I um, mean, it felt so real, like it was so weird. But the way that it affects me today would be in the sense of feeling that lack, feeling always that kind of, even the idea of having kids and being like, wow, I need to provide for somebody when I feel like sometimes I can't even during my whole life, I haven't been able to provide fully for myself in a way where I feel completely abundant and free. That, that scares me, you know? Um, but I think it's that, that, that emotion that's kind of come into this life that I'm, I'm struggling with at moments. Uh, but other than that, I can't really think of anything really. That's pretty crazy. You saw it in the meditation. I know really weird. But I'm, I've like been I've been it. connecting a little bit more when we when we were doing Courtney's hypnosis, soul empowering hypnosis. The last class, so that was the last class that you you didn't go to. She, the only the, the one I, I know. missed, man. And it was so weird because I went into it and I was like, oh, I feel like I need this for myself. I kept feeling that at the beginning of the of the class, and I was like, wow, I don't know. And everyone's like, yeah, let's let's all do a group. And so she guided us through a group kind of well, maybe meditation. Kind of, I think you're not really explaining it for those that might be listening and not know. We did a hypnosis class where we learned to do um, like follow hypnosis scripts and put people, you know, into a state where they can get information for themselves, right? From their soul and their guides. From their soul and their guides and their angels or whatever it is they want to connect with right and the last class I missed because I was heading on vacation to Germany and which was the day that the practitioners got to experience the client role man but we all but we all it didn't matter if you're a client or a practitioner she guided us all through it it was this big group hip like soul empowering hypnosis session and we were all with our eyes closed and we were she was guiding us through it and we were all talking and we were all feeding off of each other and we were all seeing really it was so cool it was amazing so i cried for 30 minutes because at one point i got a message from my my masters or guys i don't know who they were exactly actually it was my soul now i remember it was my soul and she was like this warrior and it was like amazing it was so powerful she had like a sword in her hand and it gave me, I'm getting goosebumps just saying that. And it gave me this feeling of like, wow, there's, my soul is actually so powerful and, and so, so much about fighting for what's right, which I feel sometimes. But at the same time, it's like, she's, she's not taking no bullshit from anybody. She's not doing, you know what I mean? She's like, she's very strong willed and very much decided on what she wants to do. And I need to find that strength within myself. And I felt that so powerful. And sometimes even that vision comes to me after that hypnosis session, I'm like, when I start doubting myself, I'm like, okay, I need to embody this soul that I have within me. But during that, when other people were speaking and she was guiding us, my friend who passed away two years ago of cancer came to me like so vividly. This has never happened to me before. She came, she talked to me. I cried for like 30 minutes. We're like, you know, tears streaming down my face. I was like super emotional. She was like holding my hand and she was talking to me and she gave me a message for her loved ones. And it was just like so insane and so powerful. I was like, wow, I guess I needed this. And it was not a coincidence, I guess, because it was the two, it was two years that day that she had passed away. Nothing's a coincidence. So crazy. It was amazing. So yeah. Um, that was awesome. I don't remember what your question was, but um, <laughs> I remember I remember that, and that was amazing. And I loved. Well, the I loved is, her course. The image, the way you saw your soul. Do you think that's how she always is on the other side, or did she just want you to see that image or that part of her? I don't. I think it was just she wanted me to see that essence of myself. Yeah. Like that's. It, it seemed like it was like you're more powerful than you realize. You're stronger than you realize, and you need to like grab that sword in your hand, start and start doing what you got to do. Right. And it's like, not doubt yourself and not, not hold yourself back or, you know, all those messages that I always get within myself anyway. 
but just that it was that feeling that I got because obviously I channel through feeling a lot is that feeling of like, wow, I'm like powerful. I'm like, I'm, I'm so, I'm so connected to myself. Like, why don't I trust that more? You know, yeah. we all, we all have struggled with that. I mean, it doesn't matter how connected you are. I, that reminds me of that. Re, that actually reminds me of, and to, I know we're about past lives impact, but like we're getting, <laughs> we're going, like you would say, we're going on many, many tangents. Yeah. But I, I, for people to realize that feeling, we all have that where we never feel enough or we can't get there. We can't do it. And that's what most of our readings are about at some point with almost everybody we read. We all go through that. Um, which is why I like, I don't like those images of people that put themselves out as like these spiritual people and they know it all and they got it down and like, they, they know, you know, come to me for advice. I got everything. Like I hate those images. I hate those images because everyone has stuff. Everyone has issues. Everyone has junk. Everyone's here to live experiences. <gasps> in their Is that your dog coughing? Sandy. Barking? She's bar- Sandy. All her hairs on her back are standing up right now. So like perfection image that some people try to like show themselves as or try to show that they have life down, right? I don't think anybody has life down. We're all we're all going through a new experience. And I always like remember I always said to myself, like, man, this I must be a really young soul. Like <laughs> I always felt that way about myself. I must be a really young soul. Like I'm j i am I must be just just figuring some of this stuff out because I feel like a freaking amateur. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not necessarily. I don't know. I, I that, that's that's what the thing. We all have that image of ourselves where we can do better, or we should know better, or we could, you know. I don't know. So that was my image of me always. Like ah, I, I get too emotional, or I need to figure things out better, or I'm really good at helping other people with the country records. I'm not that great at helping myself. Well, I think that's that's me too. That's I think most people, right? Like it, it's the first step you take into trusting yourself, and and after you can break through that, then if you feel like calling to help people in any way you're going to do it, but you need to go through that, that yourself first. Like we, we, we talk about that in our course, right? Like, you know, you have to start somewhere. It's a new language. It's a new way of communicating. It's a way of But it's not about receiving messages for myself. I can receive messages for myself. I'm really bad at at following through with them, understanding them as a, you know, from a personal level and kind of rearranging my life a little bit. And because that's the action that's doing something. Right which I'm pretty good at doing, but anyways. Well, um, you are very good at doing that. But I agree with what you're saying. Like, I think that's why we're so real. I think we talk about all these things and we're, we try to talk from experience and we try to, you know, be very much open about what we're going through because no one's perfect and we're all going through our own things and we're all going through our personal stuff, but you can still go on your spiritual path, feel connected, even if you're going through a lot of crap yeah, and feeling really kind of crappy, but. Well, there's part of our, there's part of our course that talks about that, the duality between feeling connected and then living mm-hmm. the chaos that is life for everybody in general. Right. Totally. So yeah. that, is, that is a thing that we teach because it is a real thing. But, um, and so this, this brought me back to my astrology reading with Patricia which if those that have, don't know about her, you can go back and listen. We have an episode with Patricia. Two um, episodes. Yes, two episodes with Patricia. Uh, she's a humanistic astrologer and she gives us really cool information and we get to interview her. But so I got my reading with her and it was like my initial reading where it's like mostly about you when you were born and your character traits and all this other stuff. And at one point she was describing how... Um, my soul is showing up as like really old soul, like with a lot of life experiences and I, I remember thinking to myself, like, I never really believed that. And then she said, but this is a new experience. And new experiences always make you feel new. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe she's saying that to me right now. Wow. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And those, that happens to all of us. We're all going through totally new bodies, totally new personalities, totally new goals and missions and purposes and reasons to be living and things to get done and, and hurdles to jump over. And so it makes us feel probably most of us like amateurs and it makes us most, almost all us feel like we don't have it down yet. Yeah. It's very true. And, and that links very much to our past life, right? Where, you know, we always explain, I think, I think we've talked about this in a few episodes where let's just get into past lives. Cause I think this would be good to mention it now how we're not supposed to remember our past lives. And, and that's, that's first, 
you know, our ego getting in the way of blocking all of that because we're supposed to not remember what happened. Because if we did, imagine how crazy our life would be right now. We're only supposed to really deal with what we need to deal with in this life. And and sometimes they could be residue. There's cellular memory. There's all those things, right, that we've, we've done episodes about that can somehow come through. And there's ways of receiving that information, of somehow getting confirmation on that through a reading with somebody or even like I was doing a hypnosis and I received that past life and it felt, it felt real. You could do past life regression. You could do tons of stuff. So I guess my point is we don't necessarily have to remember what our past lives were or what happened or how they happened. But what we want to get into this episode is about how it can affect us and what different ways our different past lives can affect us today. So maybe you can start, Lou, with explaining um, maybe your, how you see it, how it affects, how you see it affects our lives now, like our current incarnation. I think I'm going to start with a really simple example of one thing that I can think of that most all of us have a fear of something, right? Most all of us have some sort of heights or water or uh, I don't know, guns or like there's something that we're really fearful of. We've never encountered it in this lifetime. There's no reason for us to have that fear, but yet it is very much there and it's very much alive. And that's a residual thing you're carrying from a past life that your soul just wasn't o- able to get over that or fully heal that before coming into this incarnation. And that could be many lifetimes. It could be bringing in the fear of water for like seven lifetimes, for example, right? It's not that it's just the, the, the most recent one. It's just one that's still active because the soul wasn't able to clear it through yet. It wasn't able to get through it. It was very traumatic. And, and so that can come in into your presence, into this incarnation with you, can carry it with you. And like you would say, it, it's a sort of cellular memory, Mm -hmm. it's coming into your awareness and coming into your existence in this lifetime but it doesn't pertain to this lifetime it's it's owned by another body it's owned by another lifetime another life experience so that's one really simple example of something that I think almost all of us have some sort of fear that we carry from another lifetime which is usually something really bad that happened or most most commonly how that person that other individual passed away that's the most common and that's in the case guys if you have nothing to link it to in this life. Like nothing ever happened to me in the water. Like I know almost always had fun when I was a kid and all of a sudden this fear just popped in when I was tiny, when I started going to the pool with my mom and dad, for example, yeah. there's nothing you can pinpoint and there's no and explanation. I can give an example of me. And I did not, I have not asked about it. I don't want to know because it's, it bothers me so much that I haven't even dug into it, which I should, but I can't even have anybody semi step on my stomach or push down on my, even Aurora, like Aurora who's three years old, if she comes and pressures down on my stomach too much, I like get, go into panic mode. Like I freak out. Always. I just never realized that it was a thing. I thought it was a normal reaction for people. And then maybe a few years ago, I realized that I I was, it was a thing for me. I I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah. I can't, I can't do like, even the cats sitting on stuff on my stomach freaks me out. What? I get really nervous. Yeah, I get really anxious and really nervous. And I know that something happened in that area that made made that somebody that I had at some point, my soul had at some point pass away. Like maybe it was a gunshot. Maybe it was a knife. Maybe it was, I don't know what it is. I don't want to, I really don't want to know. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm not ready to know, I don't think. And then so that, make, that makes me raise the question. What if we dug into the this let's say you were curious about that, right? And I've been curious about stuff too, which I've gotten answers. Bringing that information up, let's say it was a past life or something happened to you where you got, let's say stabbed in the stomach or something and you died. You knowing that, like, how is that going to help you today? Supposedly the Keshek records will inform you about past lives because by hearing about it, it's almost like you come to conscious awareness of it and it's some another form of accepting it. It's almost like, okay, I know it exists. I accept it. I'm informing myself about it. And now I'm going to be able to come to come in terms of peace with it and let it go and release it. But you can't let it go and release it if you don't know what it is. Or if you don't want to know it. (laughs) In my case. Yeah. Yeah. I should ask for it. I I will. And I'll share with you guys one day if I do ask, but I'm not ready yet. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know why it's really, I don't know. It's really bad. 
it, I mean, it is what it is. That's your free will right there. You're, you're exercising your free will to not want to know and you don't yeah. have to ask. Right. Yeah. For, for me, past lives. And I think that's a great example what you've given there. And it's very like tangible, like it's something that a fear, right. Who doesn't have some kind of fear or um, what's the word? Like, I don't want to say trauma, but some kind of traumatic kind of thing like that, that it's like, if you do this, I'm going to freak out and I'm going to have a panic attack or anxiety attack. And I'll take it a little, like a step further from readings that I've done for people where relationships, there's a lot of things that come up with relationships, specifically, let's say, you know, let's give an example of um, a a father and a daughter. And the daughter wants to understand why her relationship with her father is so, like, you know, so crazy. Why they always um, have issues and why they're always arguing and fighting and why she always feels mad at him. You know, that, that, that's a good one. Like, I've, I've, I've had that come up a lot. Like, I always feel angry at my mom or I always feel angry at my dad. I don't understand. She just, it's like she triggers me or he, he triggers me. And, or they're like annoyed by the person, right? And a lot of times when someone will ask a question like that, for me at least specifically, if it is in, in kind of co- correlated to a past life, it will come up and it'll explain, look, you had a past life with this person where maybe the roles were reversed, maybe something happened that wasn't healed, and now you've come to somehow manage the situation in a different way. So it's not you reacting in the same way, or it's not you dealing with it in the same way it's you trying to step back understand the person have compassion for them love them through that this is just a very generic example but something like that and that you understanding what happened so they could they could go into giving you an example of what happened in that past life and how for example you abandoned that person or the person abandoned you or it could be something even crazier like what if there was a murder, like some, someone killed somebody or um, there's some type of traumatic situation, um, you know, stuff like that. Like very heavy things can come up when, when there's things that we can't put our finger on. And you, like you said, you understanding that or seeing that or that idea coming into your consciousness is going to help you see that person in a completely different light. And that's happened to me with different people. It's like, wow, now I understand them. I don't feel so pissed off with them anymore. I don't feel angry. I feel like I just want to get them. I want to just be there for them. But also like, you know, like we always say, not taking BS from anybody, putting up your boundaries, doing what you have to do and taking care of yourself first. But being able to not feel that anger that you feel all the time because you understand it. Yeah. And there's, there's another good example of like relationships that is from a positive aspect and that's meeting someone for the first time and go, I feel like I know you, mm-hmm. like you're like my new best friend and I don't even know who you are, but like, I love you already. And you feel this like kindred soul, this like relationship already with the person and you're just getting to know them. And that's a really good example of a positive way where a past life, you might've had a really good relationship with that person. That person might've meant a lot to your soul in that other lifetime and you're just meeting them in this one, but the soul's energy is already recognizing each other. They're already feeling that connection they had in another life. So that's a really good example of, you know, and some people confuse that for like, oh, I think that's this person's my soulmate. Maybe it's not your soulmate. Maybe it's just a soul that you bump into in a lot of lifetimes that meant a lot. And they're back into this lifetime now to kind of, you know, have another relationship with you, whichever way it is. Cause you guys have to remember that we switch around like, mothers and daughters and brothers and fathers and cousins and, and partners. And you, you mix it up. The Co-workers. souls mix it up. Yeah. The souls mix it up. So that's why you're going to have different experiences. That's on purpose, right? That's why you, you travel with your soul tribe or your soul group. You travel with them into other incarnations and you guys teach each other. You That's why lessons are given back and forth, which is why the karma thing is really important, right? Like, in this lifetime, if I'm going to like make life really impossible for you and awful, it's highly probable that in the next lifetime, you're probably going to decide to give me that lesson back, for example. Right. Yeah. So that's why I always say like, 
and I, we talked about this on, we were doing a podcast episode with V. Um, mm-hmm. I, remember, I, I, I think I said that at one point, like, I hear people go, oh, karma's going to get you. And I usually think, well, yeah, but it's, you're probably not going to see in this lifetime. So don't hold your breath, right? Like karma does happen. Yes, it's true. But karma's probably not going to happen in the same, same lifetime. Probably not. But also people always think about it like, oh, you just did this to me or this really awful thing you, that I feel like you did towards me. Karma's going to get you. Maybe you already did that to that person in another lifetime yeah. and they're back it's not always just one-sided so that's a, that's the other thing I think it's funny like yeah maybe this is karma maybe you're getting back what you did in another lifetime to that person so you don't that know it's true I say, we and, always tend to look to the future though it's like oh you you did this to me oh wow like you know or that's so yeah I, I never look at it backwards I always look at it forwards now that you say that which is really funny. I do and there's a Spanish saying isn't there whereas a quien maltrate, like who did I mistreat that I'm I'm going through this in my lifetime, or what what did I what did I ever do bad that I'm getting this in my lifetime? Who I don't know something like that the Spanish saying is right. Yeah, I, I don't remember, but yeah. So if you think about it, that saying is is basically the person's thinking, "What have I done to deserve this?" That's what that saying would be in English, right? What have mm-hmm. I done to deserve this? Well, yeah, sometimes it, yeah, sometimes it's not just like it's not in this lifetime. You did something in a, your soul did something in another lifetime. And now it's getting that lesson back. Um, but again, for the souls, it's not an eye for an eye. The souls, it's, you taught me this lesson. Oh, let me teach it back to you. And that's what I wanted to get into right now, actually. It's in in a way where, let's say you had this crazy experience where you hurt somebody in another life. That life culminates and the souls come together. You get together with your guide and you're deciding what's going to happen in the next life. So regarding that past life experience, the souls are going to come together and say, like, hey, you did this awesome thing of teaching me this one thing in this life. Why don't I teach it to you in the next one? Because you need to learn this too. So that past life is affecting you now in this life because you've not only experienced that thing in the past life, but also your soul and your soul contract has agreed to come into this new incarnation and learn the lesson yourself and not only that, but you've agreed it with the person, you know, that there's some kind of contract between the two of you saying, this is going to kind of suck, <laughs> but we're going to teach each other this because I'm so thankful for what you, what you did to me in this past life. I want our next life for us to complete the, these lessons. So we both have learned this. And I think the best ways for us to do it together. Which is also why they say that your soulmate is usually somebody you have a lot of struggle with because your soulmate's not here to give you tiny little easy lessons in life. Usually your soulmate's here to give you really big lessons and those big lessons don't come easy, right? So that individual loves you so much on the other side that they're willing to come and do things sometimes that they know you're going to hate them for. Mm -hmm. But they signed up for it and they promised you they're going to they're going to help you learn that. So here they are. And we all romant, romanticize. I always get mad. You always know, like when we talk about like soulmates and stuff. I always get mad. Like, why does everyone think the soulmates is beautiful thing? Like, dude, soulmates are usually a person you're like, dude, get out of my face. I'm done. I'm done with you right now. Like yeah. that's usually your soulmate. That's why you're so frustrated with the person. They're teaching you a lot of lessons and you're trying to deal with it. Um so it's not always romantic, guys. It's not always and there's romantic. A, there's a lot of karmic lessons and ties with that person for sure. Yeah, that's why it's so crazy and so back and forth and so like up and down. Yeah, and so we did like a whole course um, that we have on Thinkific that if anybody's interested, they can sign up. Where we get into a lot of details. Lauren and I channeled a lot of information about souls and their contract and what's in the contract and it's, so it's the contract that's found in the akashic records and it has all the information of this lifetime and things like that so you kind of learn what's in that contract what kind of information is decided upon what kind of information is is put into that contract and it was a really interesting course because we learned a lot while we were downloading really interesting information so we learned a lot about how past lives affect the current life th- through just channeling that that manual for that for that class that we created but one of the things for me that were like the most amazing was this, how all the pop probabilities and timelines are, are, are considered, right? So 
they know the percentages like this is probably what happen. And there's, it's almost like there's a, an escape route or an escape plan for any condition that might come in. And my favorite part of it was the clauses. Like that was my favorite part of what I yeah. learned about the whole thing was how clauses come into play. And, and a really good example of clauses is COVID-19. Mm-hmm. And I actually want to, I know that this is, is a little bit off topic, but I've been having the urge to talk about this on the podcast for, for the past few days, because I know that things are going to start jumping up now where we're going to start finding out that COVID-19 possibly wasn't as big of a deal that it, it really seemed to be played out as. And the masters were pushing a lot of messages through because they wanted to make sure that people didn't feel victimized. And so what they wanted to really say was that they took they wanted everybody and they took advantage of the situation that was being played upon us in our timeline so that we could go in. And so we could kind of re-centralize ourselves, find ourselves again, decide what we really wanted with our lives. It was, and it was a good time for, I guess you can say soul alignment for every individual person that was stuck inside, stuck in a situation where you can't do anything. You have to stay still. So this was for them a year of reflecting and next year is the year of moving and getting things done. So the only way to move things and get things done is to know what really you want and really you think you deserve and go for it. So this is the year where they wanted us to stay still and do that. And so things, things that were happening were played towards our advantage for us so that we could centralize ourselves, go in, go home, do all those things that we were repeatedly saying during the COVID heavy quarantine time right so i just want to make sure that like people don't feel victimized this is this is what they're saying really that nobody feels victimized that we were lied to or things were manipulated or news were manipulated or numbers were manipulated or we in general as a population were manipulated because what the masters are saying is each and every soul in their clause said that if this came into possibility or probability of a timeline aka the covid thing that we would accept it as a time to internalize ourselves and realign and improve our lives. So actually it was a really good thing that this clause was activated because it was part of a grand soul awakening. And I say grand soul awakening because I see many souls waking, right? So mm-hmm. don't care. Don't, it doesn't matter if it was in a laboratory. It doesn't matter if it was man-made or, or an animal, just know that your soul used it to its advantage to align its, its, its own path. That's interesting. I mean, even the message we got before was always about going in. It was always, but that's interesting, the whole victimized thing or feeling victimized, because I think a lot of people are feeling that way right now. It's jumping up in the collective, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you got that. Yeah. Very cool. It's been coming up. Um, So yeah, so clauses was one of my favorite things that we learned about past lives, how well, related to past lives and the contract in itself, because depending on where, what kind of life plan you have, if a, if a, if a condition in our environment comes actively comes into play, depending on what our soul planned to live in this lifetime, that's where you'll see how your soul decides to go down. What route, if this comes in, if this awful virus comes in, what is my soul going to decide to do? That depends on what your soul is here to learn. Right. And so it's going to greatly affect you what your past life was to see how you're going to react and how you're going to live the, these times. Right. Totally. Yeah. I mean, how could it not? <laughs> it's impossible. But also this is a year of karmic cleansing. This, this was the year where we're all cleaning out trauma. So we're cleaning out ancestral trauma. We're cleaning out cellular trauma, past life trauma. And this was the year to do that. So that's why you also f- see a lot of people over stressing over worrying or kind of feeling things a little bit more raw is the best way I can describe it right and that's because we're we're on it we're in a phase where we're cleansing that our souls are taking advantage of this stillness right of this situation and it's taking advantage to start cleansing things out in the lifetime instead of doing it in many lifetimes is actually getting a lot of things cleansed in one lifetime which is a really good thing Interesting. It is very good. It's a very good thing. And that kind of brings me to think about, because you were saying ancestral, like cleansing, the DNA, reprogramming. When I think of past lives, I also think of not only just my soul, like how does my soul's past life affect me today, but how does all of my like kind of connected um, ancestral past lives affect me too? Because I feel like that 
I mean, cellular memory, memory is an actual thing. We know that um, it's been studied and you can read up on it in books. Like it's, it's huge and it impacts us so strongly. So how, like, I guess I have a question for our Akashic, because we have our Akashic records open. Like how, how does that affect us? Like how does our ancestral karma, all of that stuff, how does that affect us today in our life, like in our lives? You can decide, I mean, so the souls, the way they're talking to me about it is in every, every, every body that the soul chooses, they're saying you're going to have, of course, its own bloodline. It's own, like you're saying, ancestral trauma, ancestral karma. But the soul actually says, for example, this, in this lifetime, I have too much of my own personal life, past lives to deal with. I'm only going to inherit. So it considers inheriting. I'm only going to inherit 40% of the line trauma line. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to deal with more than 40%. But that also means that, for example, us as sisters, that means that you decided to take 60 for me. Yeah. And I've said, well, Lori, now I'm taking 40, you take 60. It has to be evened out. So if there's one sibling, that sibling taking is taking 100% of the bloodline karma is what they're telling me. So when we have more siblings, it's better because it can be more divided and it's less to deal with. But, but the good news is if you are a single child and you're taking on that 100%, there's a lot of like, call it bonus points if you want. Mm -hmm. because it's more lessons and more things you're clearing out and you're dealing with. Right. So it's more or less, it's more like um, it's more wisdom and knowledge for the soul to carry on to the other side. So in a way it's also a bonus. That's interesting. What I'm kind of getting is the more, I think the more in the, they're looking at it in like, I want to say quote unquote negative, like the, the negative impacts it could have in your life today. It's the more trauma the more grief, the more of these negative emotions and kind of heavy um, experiences that that the collective kind of DNA that you share with other people and other lives um, you're connected to, the heavier it'll be for you. It's like you're going to feel a heaviness in this life and there's going to be not necessarily you have to learn the lessons, but that you're going to feel that heaviness and that connection. It's, and it's going to be things they're saying that you need to release in this life in different ways and that you need to somehow intuitively connect with that and with yourself and know that there's something you need to let go of and release. Yeah. That makes sense. It could be holding you back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a it's great course, way to put it. Because if you're inheriting it, it's not going to be like, oh, here, you're, you're going to be beautiful and successful and you're amazing and anything you want. No, you're not inheriting that. You're inheriting the heavy stuff. You're inheriting the hard stuff, the stuff that your ancestors weren't able to clear through. You're inheriting that, right? Correct. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it is stuff that's going to hold you back. Um, oh, I was just thinking about something to talk about and I lost it now because I was channeling it. Oh, the perks of channeling and both of us talking. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'll let you know if it comes back. I don't, I don't know what I, yeah, I totally lost it. Okay. But that, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's an important thing to know, but also we're in a really good, oh, I know I was going to say, we're in a really good time where this is a good time to clear it out. Yep. So, I mean, you don't have to know who your ancestors were. You have just have to be aware of, this is something I feel. I don't know if it was created in my timeline or in my ancestor's timeline, but let me just release it. Let me accept it, know it's there, acknowledge it and release it. That those are things we're supposed to be doing. And I don't like want to get political or I don't want to talk about too many movements that are going on right now in the world, but a lot of those are carried traumas from our ancestors, of course. Right. Yeah. And it does not belong to us. And I understand that it might be, your mom that went through it or your grandma that went through it, you know, but it's not yours because if you continue to carry it, you're doing no good for your child that's coming in. You're going to give it to them too. We're supposed to clear it out. 
So, I mean, this could go from like, in, you know, people that have great grandparents or grandparents that were in like, you know, a concentration camp or something like, and I understand that it's awful to think about your family member or your ancestor that was in that, but you, but let, you have to let it go. You need to release it and give it back to them because it belongs to their timeline and their times and doesn't belong to your generation. It needs to be healed and, and, and released because mm-hmm. if not, you're going to continue to be a prisoner of it. Yeah, that's such a good point you're making. And that's such a good example as well. And sometimes you don't know we're carrying it. That's that's yeah. the tricky part, right? We don't understand that we're carrying that subconsciously inside of ourselves and that it's hurting us. Um, yeah. So I think that's where we need to be very insightful with ourselves. We need to look inward really I wouldn't say analyze because I don't think it's about analyzing. It's really just feeling it and, and asking yourself the questions. But that's interesting. Yeah. And I was going to say something and I lost it too. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, man. Time. And, and, and a really simple example of that to not get like too emotional over, over that, what I was talking about just now, because I, I, th- I think this is a good conversation and sometimes it's really hard to have because you don't want anybody to take it personally and think and make and then think that you don't care about their feelings or their ancestral line. And of course we care, but it's that you, we care so much about the people that we talk to or talk towards, right. Or, or, or help heal to the point where it's like, let it go, release it, make allow yourself to be better. Or leave that with your ancestors and they their energy and they can deal with it. it. Your lifetime is to inherit it and to release it with love and light and, and kind of, Sub, the problem is subconsciously we take that on we don't realize it yeah you know and, and it's with we think that we're helping them or that we're helping our family and and we went all through this all in our family constellations episode with with marina it's we think we're subconsciously helping them or doing some good but we're actually only harming ourselves and not allowing ourselves to live our own path and and be fully um, free and awake in this life. And, and also we're harming those that come after us, our children or grandchildren, Correct. because you could say, yeah, it's true that your great grandma had this situation and it's true that it was not a good situation for her. But I was born into a generation where I was more privileged and you were born into a generation even more privileged than I am. And you're, you got this wonderful life ahead of you. There could be so many ways where you could talk to, you know, a child about it. That's just coming into this world and learning about, things from their own ancestors, right? But if you talk to them from a place of it's healed already, then they can easily release it too if it's still in the bloodline, right? And a good example, I was was gonna say it before I didn't get to it, is look at our ancestors. Like we don't know them. We don't even know their names. Like we've asked our parents, hey, what is you know our great-grandfather's name? Nobody knows. All we know is they all immigrated from the Canary Islands to Uruguay, all of them from both sides. That's all we know. We We don't know any more than that. Um, but there's this tendency to get up and move <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. family. <laughs> so our great grandparents did it and our grandparents did it and then our parents did it. And then Marie and I do it all the time and we're still doing it. That's one of our ancestral traumas. We, we think that, I don't know, it's not moving a solution, but we think that we need Something to go somewhere better. to find a better, yeah, we inherited that in a way. That I never thought of that. Yeah. Yeah, we hear it interesting. That. See, it doesn't have to be something super crazy. It could be something exactly. even like that, but that completely affects your life because in many ways I feel like both you and I, Lucia, have had difficulties really grounding ourselves at one place. I've I've felt that my whole life. Yeah. And I still feel it, that. I still I still think about moving. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like all the time. Yeah. And it's like, when am I and, and I have this weird feeling and it's like I don't think I'll ever find a place where I'm completely be, well, I'll completely be able to just stay free, like still. Let's, let's share with the listeners my latest obsession so they can see how bad it really is for us. I'm thinking about getting a camper van <laughs> <laughs> and converting it into a tiny house and just, I'll have it Wi-Fi on it so I can still do the podcast and the readings and I can drive myself around anywhere. I don't have to be stuck to this one place. Mm. <laughs> That's how bad it is. That's crazy. I mean, it makes me happy. Like, I'm, I'm obviously thinking about it because I'm thinking, oh, that's really adventurous and amazing. And I don't feel stuck in one place. But the reason why I don't want to feel stuck in one place is my ancestral. Me- well, you know what I'm getting? It's like running away from things. 
Yeah, in a way. Sometimes, in a way. Yeah. And I think our ancestors somehow, that's what's coming through for me at least. It's yeah. they were running away from something. I don't know and what they, they're in the Canary Islands, and I don't know what they maybe were. they're running away from poverty, maybe they're running away from something from their Looking family. Their jobs. Yeah. It was running away from the reality there to be able to live another reality that they thought would bring them more joy or more opportunities. But running away is the thing, right? And we all do that in our own way. We run away from situations, people, um, you know, that's conversations. Yeah. Conversations like Mm -hmm. anything. So it doesn't have to be the serious thing where it's like, wow, I'm living this crazy, crazy thing right now because of a past life or my ancestors. It could be as simple as something like that, that you don't understand why you do it yet. It's there and it's very prominent in your life. And you maybe not even question or worry about it, but it's still, it's a huge part of your life that affects you and what you do every day and how you, how you live your life. And let's, let's get a little bit deeper into that. So then your soul knows that this is going to be something it inherited, inherits. Your soul knows it's going to be something it's going to be dealing with. And then it picks a character personality trait to either make, to ease it or to make it worse. Cause it really wants that lesson to hit home. And so in my case, my soul picked to be born in a time where that was going to be times 20, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I have these Sagittarius with, you know, these traits where I, I'm always oh, planning and go, go, go. And get you know, and like, let me go here. Let me go here. Very adventurous. Right. And I'm always looking for adventure on top of that. My numerology number is five, which is the same. Mm-hmm. So my soul basically chose to multiply that karmic lesson with my character traits that came in with this lifetime. So that lesson is a big one for me, right? Yeah. So that's another way where your soul can play up the game of lessons, purposes, and past lives with karmic tie-ins in this lifetime and adding the personality trait to either make it a little bit more enhanced of an issue or to bring it down a little bit. That's so awesome. I love that. It's so complex. <laughs> it, it, that's a thing too. I wanted to say it's, there's so many layers to this. It's like, I could even figure out through a reading or through channeling, this issue I'm having is linked to a past life. But what if there's ancestral trauma there? What if there's a connection there with my ancestors as well that's affecting? So it could, it could have many layers to it. It's not like you'll always get one answer Maybe you'll get the answer you need that day or you'll get the response you need that day, but it could have many layers to it. And there could be a component of it that's very earthy, very much from now here in this life that you're dealing with that could be linked to that issue that was from a past life too. So yeah, it's complex. Yeah. For sure. And there's two different ways of incarnating is what they're showing me. You can either, your soul can be one of those souls where it's currently going through a phase where it incarnates in totally different bodies, totally different families, totally different generations. So it's going through a lot of different karmic family ties and different karma of its, of its own from a past lives, right? From using its free will and stuff. But then there's another type of reincarnation where the soul decides that it's going to stick to a family bloodline for X amount of time till it figures out how it's like, I want to be the owner of this issue of the family. Like I want to own this issue and I want to jump into this family bloodline as many times as I need to, till I clear it out personally for myself and for the family. Right. It's almost like it decides to take that one issue on. And if no one's able to clear it out, they're being, they're trying to be responsible for clearing that out. So they're going to be being born. They're going to have kids. Those kids are, that person's going to die away those kids are going to have grandkids. Maybe I'll be born into the grandkids or for example, one of, mm-hmm. one of the grandkids. Right. And so it jumped back into the family line and it took over part of that karmic thing that wasn't able to clear out. So there's different ways of, there's different ways of incarnating. It, your soul could be incarnating in totally different lifetimes and totally different bodies and totally different bloodlines. And that's its karma. And that's what it's doing on purpose. Or it could be deciding that it wants to kind of, double down on a family line and then jump to a new family line once it's done with that one family line. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's weird. I felt that before though. I don't know. I've never put it into words, but I felt that where, you know, sometimes it'd be like, wow, I'm traveling. It's like you're traveling with your family, like your, your blood bloodline for years. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've decided to go a different way because I need to go to this other way because there's other 
inherited stuff that I need to, to experience um, in this life, but in a different way, you know? But it's crazy because if you think about it, that means you could be sitting down and looking at pictures of your great grandparent, and that might have been your soul incarnated in that body. Whoa, you just blew my mind. <laughs> could, be true. Is, could that be, you think? Yes, it could be. Of course, because if the soul is reincarnating, for example, into a grandchild, it could be the great grandparent where you're, you're sitting down you're, and your mom's going, look, this was your grandfather, this is your great grandfather. And you could be like, I know that guy. Yeah, so it's like crazy to think that you, the person could possibly be seeing a picture of a past life. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to add anything about past lives and how it affects our current life before we wrap it up? Um, I don't think so. I think, I mean, the the main goal with this episode was really for you guys to see the different layers and the different ways that a past life could potentially um, kind of affect or, you know, have an impact in this life. And it could be, like we said, it could have many layers. It could have many ways of manifesting itself in this life. And it's not just your past life. It could be family. It could be ancestors, all of that cellular memory, all that's affecting us. And all of that can bring different circumstances and lessons that we need to learn in this life. And and ultimately, um, the struggles we go through and the karmic lessons that we need to learn and all of that and how that really makes up a big part of our life, our reincarnation, right? Yeah. I mean, you're kind of here to pick up from where you left off. That's the best way to put it, right? You're picking up from what you, what you didn't get done or what you didn't accomplish or you didn't get to in a past life. Completely. Yeah. So just a quick reminder that um, we have a Thinkific um, account set up for Soul Tribe Academy, where we're actually teaching all about the contract, the soul contract. Um, and we got all the information from the Akashic records. We downloaded it from the masters and the guides. So if you guys are interested in learning more about that, you can get it there. And yeah, we, we have other courses up. We have the backflower course where we have additional um, information given to us about each remedy from the masters as well, which, which we downloaded that. And then we have our Akashic records level one course also, which is the newest course that's been put up there. Yeah. So ultimately we're trying to move out of so many Zoom classes, so many monthly Zoom classes, just because it gets busy at moments. Um, We're still going to be doing them. We just don't know how frequently. So we will definitely keep you guys posted on our next date. But this course that we have on Thinkific, so it's our own course on Akashic Records. So same course, ultimately it's the same course. It's just a little bit more resumed more straight to the point and a lot more um, easy for people that don't have time to hop on three different calls because you have a busy schedule or because you're, you just don't have time. You just don't have that time. So this course allows you to do it at your own pace, at your own time, whenever you can, and you just do it and you finish it whenever you like, there's no time timeline on it. And you receive a certification at the end. So a certificate of completion. And then you're also added into our private Facebook group for the Soul Tribe Academy, where you're able to connect with other people that are also learning the Akashic Records. And you have our support support there too. So it's 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 an extra added bonus of, um, of the course. So... Um, yeah so if you guys are interested we'll put all that information in the show notes and yeah as always be sure to follow us on instagram on facebook all of those links will be on on the show notes as well and if you guys have any questions about any of the courses that we're doing feel free to email us at soul tribe academy at gmail.com and we will be happy to help with any questions or doubts that you have on there and we will see you guys all next week with a new episode Thanks, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you.